If your draft is done or if you're about to do your draft, you've got those guys at the very end, those undrafted players or those guys in the 13th, 14th round. You need to know which ones are a good stash and which ones should be in the trash. Check it out. Hey, Foot Clan, we hope you're enjoying your drafts and the draft season, but want to remind you about the ultimate draft. I'm, of course, talking about the Megala Bowl, the Mega biggest Bowl. tournament known in existence, as far as I'm told. If you want to be a part of this action, you head over to jointhefoot.com, help support this show, get a bunch of cool perks, including entry into that Megala Bowl. And if you take that beast down, that monster, you ride that shark right into the Listener League in 2020. Check it out. Jointhefoot.com. We also want to thank ADT. Fantasy Footballers is sponsored by ADT today. Real protection from ADT is personalized smart home security with a system that fits your unique needs and safeguards your home with rapid connections to first responders 24-7. Take ADT peace of mind with you on the go with the ADT Go app. That's real protection. That's ADT. To learn more, visit ADT.com slash podcast. This is Christian Kirk with the Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. <laughs> Oh, welcome in. I am I'm in the presence of I'm in the presence of the great Judge Giamatti who just pulled off an Odell Be Beckham-esque one-handed reception right before the show started. I crinkle, crimpled up a piece of paper I while crimpled. the I crinkled a piece of paper as the show began. I hurled it at a high rate of speed at Al Borland's face, it was on a direct line and out shoots this hand from Judge Giamatti and one hands it right in front of his face. It would have hit him Incredible. square between the eyes. You'd be dead, boy. I'm I'm in shock, Brooks. <laughs> I got to gotta protect the uh, producer here. Yeah, the producers oh. band together. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers for Friday, August 30th. We got a great show. Great quick question. Stash or trash on the show today? Ooh, yeah. It's going to be fun. We've got the final show here today before we get into week one podcasts. That's fantastic Isn't news. that amazing? I am ready to talk about real football, not just the draft season. Now, we won't be here on Monday. I'm sorry. It's Labor Day. I'm not sorry. Well, we're going to spend some time with the families this I'll weekend. I'll be in the pool. To prepare them for what they're about to endure. Uh, to say thank you for letting us do what we do. So we're going to take the three-day weekend. I know a lot of you are doing the same. And then we'll be back with week one shows starting Tuesday. And then the first NFL game will be Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Jason. Yeah, I mean, it cackling. Look, I in years past, you kind of get that itch scratched in the preseason. But this, I mean, it's yeah, just... Yeah, it was a big pre letdown. Preseason is so pointless now compared to a few years ago. So, but that what that means is that Thursday and Sunday, <laughs> it's... Oh, there's nothing better than a good scratch on a big itch. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. <laughs> That's a huge itch. That's a huge itch. Twitter... At the FF Ballers, thank you for everybody who has been subscribing to the podcast, reviewing the show on Apple Podcasts, uh, listening on Spotify or wherever you listen. We appreciate you. Stay with us through the season. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to give you some insight. We're going to help you make decisions for your fantasy team. Uh, we're going to help you bring home a title. The Okay. <laughs> What? I thought we were getting into the quick question. FootClanGiveaway.com. You can win a signed Alvin Kamara jersey. Our quick question of the day is a voicemail question. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into that. Hey, ballers. This is Alex from New York. Love the show. Um, quick question for you. When is it time to start panicking after a draft? I drafted. Don't love my team. 
what should I do? Thanks, guys. Oh, man. You, you need a mulligan, huh? That's rough. We've all lived in the world of draft regrets. It, it happens to the best of us. It, it happens to us. It happens to everybody out there. Just just hold fast. You're, you're playing a game that is it's based off of numbers and probability, and it's, it, it's tough. Look, everyone gets things wrong in fantasy football. That's just part of the game. And oftentimes you will make a draft pick and go, yeah, I knocked that one out of the park. And then the pick you made that was, you thought was an absolute stinker, you you were tilting, you grabbed the guy because your timer was running out. Turns out that was the great pick. So just just hold on. Let week one shake out. See how your team looks. The, the year is long, and a lot of owners will quit. A lot of owners will uh, stop paying as close of attention, and, and you will just destroy them as the year goes on. Put it this way. Every single year, we get uh, hundreds of messages along the lines of, man, I started 0-4, but made the right moves, made it to the playoffs, won the championship. So ask yourself, did you draft an 0-4 roster? No you, way. <clears throat> well, this guy's afraid he did, and you're still okay. In fact, I believe you can win one of those first four, sir. <laughs> Thanks, Jason, for last the motivation. Chance, last chance to get the Ultimate Draft Kit. A reminder, you can head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. If you're into DFS, you can grab the combo as well and get the DFS Pass, which this year has a lineup generator. Uh, we got some new DFS experts contributing to the content. So if you play FanDuel, Draft, DraftKings, wherever you play, um, you can get some insight. Yeah, the DFS Pass is, is better than ever. All right, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Brooks is just always athletically surprising us. <laughs> the beach race, he ends up winning, that was, going away. If there were odds, if there were betting odds about who won that race and you would have put money on Brooks, that you would have had like 100 to 1. He's also a pretty good ping pong player. That's true. Like he, he just it's heart. You can't measure Brooks's heart. No. No. All right, speaking Thursday, Cowboys owner Jerry Jones says he expects holdout Ezekiel Elliott to miss games. Cool. Reiteration of yesterday's news, but it it happened on Thursday. So wait and see with Ezekiel Elliott. I thought what was interesting from the comments was basically him saying he can't miss them all and won't miss them all. <laughs> I don't know if he's reassuring himself. Well, you we can't miss them all. It was a weird statement. It, would you, just throwing this name out there, because obviously we've been telling everybody, go grab Tony Pollard, make sure you have him. If you're the Zeke owner, if you're not the Zeke owner at this point, make sure Tony Pollard is not on waivers. Would you even play the consideration game of grabbing Alfred Morris? Mm. No. I mean, in this a, is a stash a, or trash a episode, right? So, at the very end, would you stash Alfred Morris, or is he trash? A little, a little preview. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it, unless you're in a deep league, I probably wouldn't. Yeah, we know that Tony Pollard has played all the snaps that Dak Prescott has played. They're they're telling us with their actions that he'll be the starter. that Pollard is going to be the guy until Zeke is back. Julian Edelman's scare in week four of the preseason yesterday went down Why? On, on the hand that uh, he had surgery on. He says it's fine after coming up after the play, grabbing the thumb. So fantasy owners were freaked out. It's like this one is wild. It's it's not the first time that Bill Belichick has played Julian Edelman in a situation where Everyone on the outside is scratching their head. Certainly, Uncle Bill has earned the benefit of the doubt at this point. He has a reason for the, the things that he does. But it's just, what what are you doing, man? In preseason week four, I mean, there with, are, with the wide receivers you have right now, you're going to risk Julian Edelman? The, uh, the Raiders on the flip side, I believe they are only bringing about 50 players to the Seahawks. Like, they're not bringing... They're, like not not playing <laughs> so careful. Like, they're not. No, you. This is a this is a final destination situation. You stay in your room. 
You you close the door. You put mattresses everywhere. You stay safe. I'm always amazed that you know the Cardinals played up in Mile High, played the Broncos last night. Players like Larry Fitzgerald, who are not going to play, they suit up. You know what I mean? They put on all the gear. That would, it seems like a big hassle. I, I, like you're not going to play. I get that because you suit up. You put on your pads. It's just get, that's getting your body used to. Okay, I'm preparing for game action. I'm going to warm up. I'm going to get. I'm just starting to get into the routine. I like players warming up and dressing uh, because that's. I think that actually does help a player get ready mentally for the season. But getting out and like putting Julian Edelman out there, he's he's good, man. He doesn't need to do it. You know who did need to be out there? Josh Gordon. Yes. And this one I I agree with. He has been uh, reinstated. He is eligible to play week one. He caught two of six targets for 30 yards last night. He's still very large. Had, had a nice broken tackle. So how confident would you be to play? Here, I'm going to ask the first week one question for a friend. Deshaun Jackson <laughs> has the finger <laughs> issue. Yeah. Josh Gordon has the unknown of how much work does he get? Didn't get a whole training camp, all of that. Josh Gordon or Deshaun Jackson? Where's Josh it? Gordon. Josh yeah. Gordon. Josh Gordon. He's at home. He's versus the Pittsburgh Steelers in, what, in a game that should have a decent amount of points put up. Also and has ten, Josh, 10 working fingers. Yeah, and he is a – I mean, Josh Gordon should be a starting wide receiver. Not that DJX isn't a starter, but it's like, will he be out there for every single wide receiver package? So if you play Josh Gordon, make sure he's in your flex. Sure. Oh. Yes, that's great. Look at this piece of in-season advice. You're saying that because... He plays on Thursday. That's right. And so if you play him, make sure he is not, not. in your flex. Sorry, in, did I say in your you flex? Did, you did, and I was very confused. Trick question. <laughs> make sure he is not in your flex, even though he's probably a flex-type player. Yeah, Go make on. sure he's in your starting lineup, so that way you do have flexibility to put somebody in your... You know, from either position in your flex. Yeah, we we talk about these players as it's he's a wide receiver one, he's a wide receiver two, he's a wide receiver three. Your the actual starting lineup of your platform, they they don't care where you put the players, but you're you're putting yourself at a disadvantage if you play a Thursday night player in your flex because it removes flexibility. All right, Ryan Fitzpatrick getting the start week one against the Ravens, lucky guy. Ryan oh, Fitzpatrick, Ryan. do you have interest in playing him? The great streaming Ryan Fitzpatrick. Not against the Ravens. Yeah. In yeah. a streamable matchup? Heck yes, I will be interested. Kareem Hunt underwent sports hernia surgery on Thursday morning. Now, that's a four- to six-week timeline. He's not eligible to return to action until week 10 as it is, but passing that news along. And then the ping-pong ball of Kiki QT. Bill O'Brien says he's trying What does a ping pong ball sound like? I believe it's identical to a clock, if I remember correctly. It's <laughs> Yes. Ah, yes. There it is. If you go back Perfect. to the archives, I've made that very clear to you. Kiki, trending in the right direction, could play week one now. Okay. <laughs> I like taking him late in drafts. I like the player. I'm saying okay to this. This is just bizarre. We're already into these shenanigans. I guess. I guess. Bill O'Brien. All right, that's today's news and notes. News and notes brought to you, as always, by Sleeper. Download the free app. Move your league over there. It's a modern platform with in infinite customizations. So infinite. It hurts. So, so infinite. So infinite. It hurts. So, all right, without further ado, let's get into our main segment for today's podcast. Stash or Trash. Now, Brooks, you put a disclaimer in there. What do you want the people to understand about stash or trash? Um, you got to take your league into account. Your If you have an extra bench spot, maybe these trash doesn't apply to you for all these players. That, that sort of thing. So Don't keep, tell me what I got to do, Brooks. Keep your league in mind. Uh, we're making stash or trash picks today, deciding on some players that are on the edge of rosters right these are double digit players these are guys that you drafted late they might be on your waiver wire but one thing is for sure they all got a little bit of a stench upon them that's fair and the truth is is you're going to need some flexibility week one in the waiver wire and we're going to try to bring forth some names and whether or not you need to hold on to them through that 
period of time where you're tempted by the week one stars because there'll be probably 10 to 15 players on the waiver wire after week one yeah. that have put up double-digit fantasy performances, and people will be wading through them saying, are these legit players? Are they Ogletrees? Are they Will Disleys? You know, those type of players, especially at the tight end position, honestly. It, you know, does TJ Hawkinson have a double-digit week one and people sure. jump to conclusions, that type of thing. Let's start at the running back position. Deion Lewis is being drafted at the 1301. So a 13th round pick, Deion Lewis, stash or trash? What's wild about Deion Lewis is, to me, he is 100% a stash. I mean, look at last year. He had 67 targets. They He was – Derrick Henry was given the chance to be the guy. It didn't work out. Then they tried to give Deion Lewis the chance to be the guy. That also didn't really work out, so they went back to Henry. But Lewis is not being talked about at all. Derrick Henry is – and he was talked about so much last offseason yes. because of how efficient and effective he was in New England. Yeah, and Henry is, is the hot draft pick, but we were we had our league of record draft, and I had my co-owner, Damon, was there, and he we were like, do we draft Deion Lewis? And I, I just couldn't bring myself to draft him, even though I think that he is a valuable stash. So this... It really depends on your league here, but I I think you should hold on to Lewis because he might come out and get four targets week one, and the Derrick Henry experiment might get off to a very slow start. I, I am not bullish on, on Deion Lewis. He had so much opportunity to be good last year and wasn't. He was pretty much irrelevant for most of the year, even though he got plenty of carries, plenty of targets. However, at the end of the draft, Derrick Henry has been dealing with a problem. He says he's... Hopeful to be ready for week one. And he came back, you know, to the team. But, it, but I mean, he's hopeful to be ready right. for week one. That's where you do want to stash a guy. That's where you say, okay, well, maybe he has a setback this week. And all of a sudden, you've got the complete 100% starter in Deion Lewis. Uh, if, if Henry was back, if Henry was out there, I would probably trash him. But knowing that there's some murkiness to the Derrick Henry injury... I, I would stash Deion Lewis. I mean, Lewis. to be fair to Deion Lewis, he did have at least a handful of, of solid games, including week one where he had over 100 yards from scrimmage he and was a touchdown. The, he was the running back 12 last year, week one. So as an RB1, maybe you can get it this year again. Also an example of how week one can treat fantasy owners. Oh, everyone go get your Deion Lewis. He's a, he's a running back one. Yeah, I mean, all of the offseason talks seemed to pay off at that time. All right, I don't have anything to add on Deion Lewis. I agree with you. I think he's a stash because of the calf injury. Colts running back Naeem Hines, 14th round pick. He's a trash for me. Yeah, I'm not super interested in, in holding on to him. He will be the pass catcher, I think. That it, We saw how they used him last year. Marlon Mack is capable, but they still gave that role to Naeem Hines. But he was – he had a lot of targets – a lot of opportunity, but I mean, he was incredibly inefficient. That was Andrew Luck guiding the offense. Jacoby Brissett may be better than he was a couple years ago, but he still is not Andrew Luck. So with the offensive hit, I'm not really interested. Now, Brooks, do you take this as a personal insult that we are unanimously trashing one of your guys that in every draft that I've ever been in this offseason? You're always coming over to my computer. You're pointing like, oh. I, I believe in Hines. I know. You, so, do you still believe in Hines? I was going to ask Brooks the same question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's late enough. Where I'll, I'll I'll keep him on. I'll stash him. Now we have some breaking news. I'm not pushing the button because yeah. I, I, that button is for S sorry, fantasy Jason. relevant news. This is just sad news for Jason. Oh no, Rodney Anderson tore his ACL. Get oh, the same my. one he tore last year. Uh, the Bengals same. rookie running back. Yes, he's, thank oh, you, Brooks. He's, oh my goodness, he's done. Yeah, I mean, his career is done. The it's reason just he, really sad. He was a very talented player. He was player, great. He and was so good. He was the best running back in this class, in my opinion. But the reason he dropped to the sixth round was because he's missed pretty much every year of his career. And he's had an ACL. He's had broken bones. I think a neck problem. Basically, if you can have an injury, he's had it. That sucks. And yeah, then in preseason. That's got to be a mentally difficult situation to deal with, knowing now you recover. You have to recover from that again just to yep. have a shot. The, uh, the 
the quick fantasy implications of it, because that's we're a fantasy show, Travion Williams, who is right now the third string running back for the Cincinnati Bengals, Dynasty, he definitely gets an upgrade to me. All right. Um, let's go ahead and turn to a couple other names. Ty Montgomery, C.J. Anderson, both 14th round picks, dash or trash. I am not in on Ty Montgomery. He's not a stash for me. I don't believe that we're talking about an, an offense that, while I, I like Sam Darnold, I like some opportunity to improve, I don't think we're talking about a, a good enough offense to, to make me interested in stashing Ty Montgomery on my bench because I'm only looking at him to have value if Le'Veon Bell is out. So he's a, he's a trash for me. 100% he is nothing more than a handcuff to the Le'Veon Bell owner. I drafted him in a 14-team league where I was the Le'Veon Bell owner. In those deeper leagues, that's the context Brooks is looking for. <clears throat> that's where I w I'm willing to draft a handcuff. Otherwise, no, I'm not. I'm going to keep my eyes on him. I'm a bit hard if Lev Bell goes down, but he should be on the waivers. I don't expect him to be uh, getting the volume that makes him weekly startable. All the right. Well, then, Mr. Carry on Johnson. Yeah. Truther. It's. It's really, really hard to read the tea leaves that Detroit has laid out for us because it looked like they're dwarven <laughs> leaves. <laughs> yes, That's the problem. They, they are. And my leaves. <laughs> yeah, it, we, yeah. You had the first action with Carry on Johnson. He was getting pulled on third down, and C.J. Anderson was coming in. Then you had the next game where Carry on Johnson was in for a string of snaps, but then he was put on ice real quick, and C.J. Anderson was getting a bunch of carries. You've also had C.J. Anderson showing up as the third down back in some of those preseason yes. games. I don't understand why people who are out on Carry on Johnson are not drafting C.J. Anderson because the argument that they are making is that this is a real split and that third down or goal line could be C.J. Anderson's, but C.J. Anderson's undrafted. It's like if you don't believe in Carry on, he's a perfect perfect stash because you're going to find out week one what is the role you're going to see how it breaks down now i i'm cool with week one stash on cj anderson yeah well, me too i don't see a lot of value beyond that because i'm not competing for you know low snap totals in tampa i don't want those guys well, i have them on my team but, <laughs> but i don't have you know a gundawale yeah so uh, it's one of those things where i'm not personally out of respect for carry on Johnson. You're not doing that? I'm not stashing C.J. Anderson. You just want, if this ship goes down, you want it to go down I'm the captain flames. of the ship, and I deserve to be in that room drowning when that ship goes down. Even if when everybody's down. screaming at you, just, I'm, just I'm gonna, leap onto the back of C.J. Anderson. He'll take you to shore. I'm telling everyone, C.J. Anderson, the lifeboat. Get in your C.J. Anderson <laughs> boat. I'm staying here on the ship. But my the point life is... Boat. <laughs> gross. My point is, if you are one of those people that believe that carry on's being overdrafted. He's going to be a bust this year. You should be drafting CJ Anderson. It doesn't make sense not to. Huh. And, and personally, when I look at the, the stash of trashes, I'm looking to, at, at that as, will I find out week one? I don't want to hold a guy that I, I'll find out by week five. I'm not as high as you are on carry on Johnson and I'm not drafting CJ Anderson. So, so if I don't CJ, think that that's a uh, like some sort of logical fallacy. I'm not excited about CJ Anderson exists to hurt carry on. He doesn't exist to help my team. That's how I feel about mm -hmm. him because he's a fourth, 14th round pick. They don't. If he and carry on split goal line carries, wow, I've got three or four touchdowns each over the course of the year. I guess I'm just not excited about. I don't think CJ is going to run away with the job. Carry on's the better player. Yes, that's true. So, but, but if they were splitting, it's crazy that one guy's okay. going well, in the yeah, back if they of the were second. Splitting. Sure. One and guy's I don't, going in the back of the second, and the other's like right, free. undrafted. Sure, I don't believe they're splitting. My goodness. I hope not, Jason, for your sake, yeah. for your mental health. Uh, Devin Singletary, a 10th-round pick. Justice Hill, a 10th-round pick. Both guys being drafted ahead some of the, ahead of some of these handcuff players. Um, Singletary's had a lot of uh, publicity just being – He's a talented rookie. He's got juice. In a backfield in Buffalo where LaShawn McCoy's there and Frank Gore's there, so you've got the long in the tooth running backs, and so he's being drafted well ahead of Lewis, Hines, Montgomery, Anderson. But Singletary and Hill, who are you more interested in between those two? If you have to stash one of them, trash one of them, what are if, you doing? If I have to stash one, it would be Justice Hill 
Because I think long term he can work his way into a, a role even with the current depth chart. But Devin Singletary is, for me, is a 100% stash through this weekend. This is when the big cuts are going to happen. If the move with Shady McCoy that has been whispered about all offseason, if that's going to actually happen, it will come right now, and it will be a shock, and everyone will freak out and run to grab Devin Singletary off your waiver wire. You should already have him. And speaking of that logic, this is very deep. This is a very, very deep, deep stash. But a running back who has been projected to be off the team, he is the running back projected to be off of Justice Hill's team, is Kenneth Dixon. Beat reporters think that the Ravens are finally going to throw in the towel. They're finally going to cut him. Kenneth Dixon is actually an extremely talented running back. Things have just – he's had really, really bad breaks. But there's teams some, out there – Some not his fault, some his fault. Yes, yes, exactly. But there are teams out there like the Houston Texans and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that if Kenneth Dixon becomes available, they might snatch him up and he might be thrust into a role sooner than later. So this is – I'm saying 14-team leagues, deeper leagues – I, th- I like six, holding five point six a carry last year yes. on sixty carries. That's and, what Kenneth yeah, Dixon is, put up. He and he's a good uh, pass catcher. So yes. you've got a well-rounded back. That it, yeah, if he ends up in Houston, he's he's someone to keep an eye on. And I would I would trash Devin Singletary tomorrow, not today after the cuts. I'm, yeah, you got to let the cuts happen moment. before we get into the wide receivers of the stash or trash. Want to thank today's sponsor. It's brought to you by Head and Shoulders and Walmart because everybody knows everybody that using Head and Shoulders every day is great offense for your hair. <laughs> Mike, Mike, no, Head and Shoulders is great defense against flakes. <laughs> oh, Jason, <laughs> offense, defense, offense, defense, tomato, tomato, potato, potato, wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow. <laughs> Yes. Waffle fries. Shoestring fries. All right, Jason. We're supposed to be talking about how head and shoulders is like a two-point conversion for your hair. More like uh, a safety (laughs) for your flakes. Head and shoulders, great offense for your hair. Defense against flakes. Well, check out head and shoulders on walmart.com or look for head and shoulders blue and white bottle at your local Walmart store. I'm just picturing two stooges in this situation, (laughs) poking each other in the eyes. We also want to thank Discount Tire. When's the last time you thought about your tires? Tires are what make the difference in how your car feels and drives. And since 1960, Discount Tire has been keeping customers safe by taking care of all your tire and wheel needs. They have 1,000 locations across 34 states. Their main focus is your safety and the safety of everyone else on the road. Discount Tire also has the lowest prices on the best and largest selection of tires and wheels. They'll even make personalized recommendations for you based on your zip code and your driving preferences. Whether you need an air check or a set of tires and wheels, they can get you back on the road with peace of mind and change to spare. Visit DiscountTire.com to shop, research, and purchase your tires today. You can even make an appointment to skip the lines. That's DiscountTire.com. Discount Tire, they'll get you taken care of. They also have that. You guys remember the commercial with the the, the, the oh, lady yeah. comes she and she just the chucks the tire the, the window. The window. It's, it's a classic. Yes. It's a classic. Um, they said, "Please feel free to return." That was the. <laughs> wonder if that ever backfired on them. And they got a tire through the window. Yeah, I hope not. I hope not. But I, uh, I, by the way, you guys brought up this in your uh, head and shoulders uh, debate, discussion, argument, fight. Wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow. Mm-hmm. This came up on. Did we bring this up on this show? I don't. I don't think so. So on our Sirius XM show, it comes up that all of a sudden, Mike and Jason have lived their entire lives. Yes, believing that the word is wheelbarrow. And according to the Twitter poll we put up, forty percent of you out there agree or had previously thought of the object as a wheelbarrow and had the courage to click on what right. you actually thought i think the the poll results we need we have if like a those, plus minus of five i'm barreling down the backyard <laughs> with a wheelbarrow full of rocks and i believe that we need more literacy in america that's what i learned from about 40 percent more than we have well what you need is authors to start writing the word wheelbarrow it was more so 
incredible to me. And so we had a, a fun time on the show. You guys, now, are you making the transition? You never, formally. Never. It's a wheelbarrow. You're calling it a wheelbarrow anyways? I've even told though you, you know it's not a thing? I've told you that I'm out on new music. Yeah. I just want 90s music in, in my life. And I called it a wheelbarrow in the 90s. So for everyone listening, you have to understand, we're probably going to keep saying bangles instead of bingles, <laughs> right? Jag, jag, Jaguars. Jaguars. Oh, I, won't, I won't say bangles because that's a band. Instead of uh, Jaguars. 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 Yes. We get some things wrong. That's okay. We help your fantasy team. Stash or trash wide receivers. Jamison Crowder. The, uh, now, the wide receivers are harder. Yeah. Jamison Crowder, Quincy Anunwa. Crowder being drafted in the 11th, Anunwa undrafted. I would be stashing Jamison Crowder. Me too. Of the two? Not Quincy Anunwa. Yes. Yeah, what we've seen is Jamison Crowder getting that got underneath that short work, which if you recall last year, I know different offensive scheme, but the the player who had that role for Sam Darnold, whether it was Quincy Anunwa, Jermaine Curse held onto it for a very short time, but – they uh, they had success. They were they had PPR success, and on top of that, you have the Robbie Anderson calf mystery that's happening. Well, hopefully, that mystery will be cleared up, and Robbie's good to go week one. But I'm with you, Andy. I, of the two, it's Jamison Crowder, and it's just for the unknown factor. It's I, just to see what he does with Darnold. Sure. If he has this connection with Darnold in week one, I mean, Mike, you talk about Cole Beasley. You talk about yeah. um, Adam Humphreys. Adam Humphreys. Jamison Crowder's in the same category of. What if you got a PPR monster, especially with the Robbie injury, if they let Darnold throw the ball more and Crowder comes out? If Crowder had eight catches in week one, I wouldn't be surprised. Nor, nor would I. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny to hear you guys say that. I'm more on the Quincy and Unwa side in the sense that he's not new to this team. He's got two years with Darnold. You've seen a connection in the past with him. While Herndon is out, I mean, he's a master of that middle-of-the-field area. I feel like the first four weeks with Robbie's injury, I'm more on the Quincy side uh, I mean, that's the thing, though, is you we don't know for sure. And by we, I mean the whole anyway. world does not know whether if Quincy will be the, the main target ahead of Crowder or Crowder will be ahead of Quincy. I don't think you've been able to really glean that from uh, the main preseason games. They've both been utilized. They both looked fine. It's nice that Quincy Nunwa is healthy Yes, at this present moment in time because when he's been healthy, he has been a very good player. He is a very good player. Bills, wide receiver, John Brown being drafted in the 12th round. Stash or trash John Brown? Stash. Heck, heck yes, yeah, stash. Stash. That's a great stash. I mean, look. I think I'm out on Brown. Really? Yeah. I think I am. Weren't, because you, weren't you in on Foster earlier before they added John Brown? Not really. Okay. I, I liked seeing the direct connection between Josh Allen and Foster last year, but you still have... The problem that I have is just volatility. I think I'm out on John Brown because I know how volatile he'll be in an offense that doesn't throw the ball as much as others. He was not a good wide receiver with Lamar Jackson. I don't see it being very different with Josh Allen week to week because I think Zay Jones is going to be a, a higher frequency target for Josh Allen. I think Cole Beasley will be a higher frequency target. Agreed. So I just think volatility-wise, I'm kind of like, I think John Brown will give you a big game. He'll probably be like the week one waiver wire pickup of the year. Because they'll have, like, a touchdown. That sounds like someone you should stash and trade then. Yeah, you could do that. You could do that for sure. Just I don't like, have a problem with that. I'm just saying, and then you play him two weeks. I just don't know if you're going to get consistency from John Brown anymore. Yeah, I, I, I can totally buy that's into just my, the, This is my take on John Brown. Well, you're not going to get consistency. It's not going to be an every single week thing from a low passing volume. But you're not necessarily going to get consistency from a Deshaun Jackson. Now, that's true. Deshaun Jackson is more proven. Carson Wentz is more accurate. So obviously Deshaun Jackson, a tier above. I think it's, it's a good comparison. It's the same type of player. And certainly if you're in a best ball league, John Brown's going to get his deep balls from the cannon arm of Josh Allen several times through the year. But in your home league, it's, it's going to be hard to know when to start him, when to play him. But Mike, you bring up a good point. If he hits you know, if he's hitting half the time or 40% of the time, if that 40% happens on week one, yeah, you're good. going to have trade value for sure. So is he a stash for you, Mike? Yeah, he, he is. And just because the, the last point I was going to bring up is Robert Foster last year, last year when Josh Allen came back, Robert Foster was also coming back. And then we saw 
you saw four games over 90 yards in those final seven contests. It was, it was awesome. Like Foster was was part of the reason Josh Allen was great for fantasy. No, you're right. You're right. Probably worth seeing what you have with him being a 12th round pick. Golden Tate. I it's written in here as a Lions wide receiver by Brooke. Uh oh, oh by Brooke. Oh, so, oh Brooke. The good old days. You know, that was two teams ago, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's Brooke. That was two teams ago, he said. Seattle Seahawk, Golden Tate. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Brooks, for calling you out, but if you had let that piece of paper hit Al Borland in the face earlier, maybe I wouldn't have. Mm. The call out was deserved. Um, Golden Tate is uh, a New York football giant. He's also suspended for four weeks. 12th round pick right now. If you were drafting Golden Tate. No. Trash. 100% trash. I mean... Uh, there's 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 no way now I, I just brought up john brown for best ball is he a week three stashed in i mean are you going after golden tate when he's on his way yes, back 100 percent. you just don't want to clog your bench i don't want week week one waivers are so important yeah for your year and so are week two those two first weeks are incredibly important to have a guy that's not able to play on your bench that's terrible i would never draft golden tate in a redraft however because of that suspension he is dropping like bananas in best ball leagues. <laughs> Dr bananas can drop from a tree, right? <laughs> sure. He's dropping I like mean, a I've coconut. I've never heard that expression in my life. He's dropping like bananas. Look out! <laughs> it's a banana! <laughs> All bananas do is go down. <laughs> down, down, down. Bananas. Well, yeah. Like people slip on bananas. Well, after they drop. <laughs> what Maybe that's why there's such a slipping problem. Exactly. Okay, um, he's look, going, going down like bananas. Look, got it, got in, it. In best ball, Notre Dame wide receiver Golden Tate is a great option <laughs> Notre because Notre Dame wide receiver. I'm just keep continuing <laughs> to go back. Um, he's you. You miss those first four weeks, but you've got the whole season. Every, essentially, everyone's in the playoffs in best ball because you get you get you know 16 full games so you're getting 12 games from a good value and he's dropping as if it's redraft in best ball but in a normal home league no i'm not stashing for week 1 golden tape all right here here's a really good one marquise goodwin and debo samuel 49ers wide receivers are both massive stashes for me we're talking Tom Selleck level stashes. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. E yeah. Debo's in that list now. Debo 100% in that okay. list. Okay. Week one, I want to see, I want to see what happens week one with that wide receiver core. Uh, Kyle Shanahan has said, uh, you know, Jalen Hurd is not playing week one. Jalen Hurd is out. Marquise Goodwin, Debo Samuel, Dante Pettis. Let's let it shake out on the field week one. I don't want to be chasing Debo on the waiver wire when he catches eight passes and is the you know steps in. Trent Taylor's out too. So you, you just get to see it in week one and then sure. move on. That, I'm a big stash on both. I am a very big stash on Marquise Goodwin. Yes, I know. I am not a stash on Debo Samuel. I don't I, – I, I like That will talent. be a mustache of yours. Mm, no? No? Oh, you're going to get no. the card. You could get a three on that one. Um, <laughs> Seemed like you got a three because that was already out. That's correct. That th This is just, I grabbed this to give a three. That's the only purpose. You grabbed his scorecard and you gave me a three. Gave that's a three fair. That it's, that's the best I could have hoped for. Look, Goodwin is second year in the system. He's currently healthy. He's the fastest man alive or close to it. Definitely the fastest man it's in the, the NFL. Um, definitely not the second year in the system. He, oh, with... He's been there for three years. Yeah. Well, I okay, multiple years in the system, but with Garoppolo coming in, I'm just saying. I felt like you were about to say, no, no, I'm still right, yeah. even though I said two. Oh, well, stick look, to it. Fellas, I must ask you a question. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, I'm getting the cards out. Oh, I loved that one. There we go. You're getting a solid eight. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> are you interested in a player who, when Jimmy Garoppolo started his career for San Francisco, had – Three straight games of 100 yards. I mean, I'm and that was Marquise Goodwin, who earlier in the offseason, no, I was not interested because it sounded like Goodwin was going to get cut. He has a massive injury history, so which that exists. The injury risk for Goodwin is is still 100% there. But the this fall of Dante Pettis has been a huge benefit for, for Marquise Goodwin, who is a locked-in week one starter for this team. So I wanted, I'm going to stash and see what I got. For Goodwin? Yeah. Not Debo, though. 
It's, I, I am all about Debo Samuel. You guys are both going to regret it in week one. Maybe. He's going Maybe. The, he's, the, he's the polar opposite vibes of Dante Pettis in that offense who's and being constantly asked to do more. I don't think that the that you're wrong on there's a, there's a chance that it happens. I just have one or two spots where I can actually stash players. Sure, and so sure. I don't I'm not I don't want to stash a rookie wide receiver who Based, might be the starter. We're and this not, is the we context that yet. Brooks wanted us to have right. is that you have different decisions to make. You don't get to stash all these players. You have to make, you know, so, so stash look, decisions, you know, Debo or John Brown, you probably stash in John Brown in that situation. Yeah, right. so I want to ask the question here between Debo and Marquise Goodwin. If you, you, you've you got one spot to stash, they're both on your waivers, you're listening to this show, That's a who great would question. you rather stash there? I think, man. Wow, you're even considering Debo. Yeah, to me it's – That's wild, man. Debo is being drafted ahead of him. Not that that validates my point if I pick Debo here. But I like, I like upside, and I think Goodwin offers you – we've seen him. He's a big play guy. He gets injured a ton. Debo Samuel, I think, could establish himself as the the he favorite could. target of Garoppolo. So I think I Debo like is good. He's yes. he's very good. He's very good, and he does everything uh, Kyle Shanahan wants him to do. I think he could have a more integral role that's more valuable for fantasy. Goodwin fits into the D. Jackson John Brown category of on again, off again. Not going to be a high volume guy. If when, you believe in Pettis, I do. I was going to say when it's all said and done, this is irrelevant because Pettis is going to be the clear number one. I love that you. I'm, I love that he's your my guy. All right, McCall Hardman, 13, 13th round pick. McCall Hardman, are you interested in who could be the fifth target on an offense just because of the innovation of Andy Reid? End rounds, running opportunities, big plays. McCall Hardman, are you stashing or trashing? I am not stashing. I think yeah. I'm. I don't think I am either. Yeah, no. I Look, the, similar to the Debo argument, it is very, very rare for a rookie wide receiver to get off to a hot start on their NFL career week one, week two. That's not to say it doesn't happen. Uh, you know, 2014, you had a couple of guys do it. You got your Anquan Boldens of old that just come out and torch the world week one. But because it's rare and he doesn't have – a spot really locked in, I feel like it's going to take injury or a, a transaction to put him on the field enough to be a reliable starter. For those reasons, oh, I'm out. Shark, shark tank. tank. Look, if Miko Hardman goes off week one, it's because he caught two passes for 75 yards and a touchdown. This isn't. He doesn't have that Anquan Bolden opportunity where he's an integral part of the offense right away. Miko was very interesting when it looked like Tyreek Hill was going to miss the NFL or miss a bunch of games. So it's been very interesting to see how they've used him in the preseason. They will use him. Touch passes, screen passes, yes. opportunities to let those legs run free. Yes, but it's it's just hard to stash a guy who's – when you have Hill, Zeus, and the Lizard King all on one team. And <laughs> and I didn't even bring up Damian Williams. Yeah, absolutely. So. I think that makes sense. Um, any Dolphins wide receivers at all, stash or trash? Look, I mocked uh, Mike early in the offseason. I hated the love that you gave for Albert Wilson. I didn't understand it. I didn't believe he'd be ready, yada, yada, yada. And now I find myself, as we are a week away from the NFL kickoff, I'm like I'm kind of interested in Albert Wilson. He's the only one, even though I, I believe in Kenny Stills as a as – a, me medium level, uh, uh, mid <laughs> mid level NFL wide receiver. Really nice to see you downgrade him officially. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Um, but Albert Wilson, he's interesting. He's healthy. He's, I have no interest in any of them. They are trash, 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 trash. You I, know what's helpful about that is the quarterback situation there. That I, will tra probably change in like two weeks. It could, but that's why I'm interested. Or that's been part of why I've been interested in Albert Wilson. Well, let me it, put it another way. Will you chase him? If he has a good week one on the waiver wire, uh, because I, I have depends a on how Ryan Fitzpatrick looks. Okay, so I've got a I've got a color in my opinion here because, my, you know, I've changed a lot on Albert Wilson. I'm interested in him, but he's definitely a trash. Because when I actually think about would I in my league go get him right now? Plays Ravens week one? No, I, I wouldn't. So I don't want people to think, oh, I'm saying he's a definite stash. He's more of a keep an eye on, wait and see if he's healthy. Um, I'm I'm not gonna grab him prior to I mean, his break. Like we just talked about Golden Tate. I would much rather have Albert Wilson stashed on my bench than Golden Tate. Well, sure, 
Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, Golden people are drafting Golden Tate. Stop. I, I would rather have Golden Tate on my bench than Albert Wilson. That's where I would be. I think Golden Tate will be a a pretty peppered target in that offense. He could, yeah, he, he once could the season be. starts week but, five. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, some people play the game of you're going to sign and drop four players before you pick up Golden Tate anyway. If you're picking up Albert last year, here's some examples of last year's stash of trash: Josh Doxson, John Ross. Taewon Taylor, Doug Martin, Danny Amendola. If I'm picking four of those and just dropping them week after week, I feel like I know the commodity that is Golden Tate. I don't know the commodity of some of those other players. Some panned out last year, the big stashes. Matt Breida, James Conner, those were guys that, amazingly, James Conner was in stash or trash last year. That, Everyone you know, was still that funny waiting to think for about? Lev Bell to come back. We also have an update on Golden Tate's team. Uh we're, he, talk, we're talking about Pope John Paul II High School wide oh. receiver, Golden Tate. Thank you, Brooks. Yes, awesome. Brooks has let us know he's starting next week. It's a homecoming game. Always update, up-to-date info here. Man, if Golden Tate could go back and play on his high school team. Dude, I would get tickets. I would stash him. I, 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 I he would, would be good. I love watching people just dominate. <laughs> just like <laughs> he's been held back six years, but he's still eligible to play high school. That is part of your – your personality and character, Jason, is you have no qual- you have no qualms about admitting competition is not something you're interested in. You want pure and utter domination. Cheat codes. I love the um, idea of competition, the expectation of competition, and then the annihilation of enemies. Now, in that how would you relate that entire kind of circumference of thought with your foosball play of late? There has been domination. Okay. There has been domination. You can, Are you embracing that? You can uh, ask. No. Uh, it, w- it will flip soon. Here's here's the reality. <laughs> you can ask my wife. Not bloody likely. You can ask your Oh, no. Did you bring it home last you night? Can, oh, my goodness. Did I bring it home last night? I was so man depressed. I'm sorry. That's my fault. Look, I'm going to put this out there. I got I to gotta own up to the truth. Mike. You have been on fire. I am usually on defense. You are on offense. We were on separate teams. Offense. <laughs> defense. <laughs> and the reality is, metaphorically speaking, you laid me over your lap and you gave me a whooping <laughs> over and over and over. And I felt so bad. I, was, I went home depressed because I'm great at foosball. I'm not good. I'm great. And you I are. Was, and I was terrible. And then I went. Or Mike was just really good. Well, I like th- that's part of my compliment. You, I say he's great. So what does that make me? <laughs> right. And and you you posted a picture of me like looking up. Oh. But I got to tell you, last night Tiff walked in on me watching crying, foo- watching foosball videos <laughs> last night laptop? at home Close. because I was. <laughs> yeah, no, laying, no, it's not what you think. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> but here's what I learned. Here's what I learned. I was watching a one of the the best matches of the last several years between <laughs> two great players, one of which is referred to as the Michael Jordan of foosball, and he was. There's it, a Jordan of foosball. There is, um, and the the opponent of him had a. Is he the bird? Wicked. Yes, he would be the bird of foosball. He had a wicked pull shot, Ooh. and he smoked Michael Jordan. For eighty percent of his shots, I mean, I felt so much better about my lack of being able to defend Excellent. your pull shot because I'm like, okay, I just need a better offense. So huh? one part of the one part of the analysis there is, I thought you were trying to get better, but you were also looking for justification for getting beat. I was only looking to get better, but I received justification. <laughs> okay, we're gonna jump into the mailbag for a few questions. Help you guys out. Mailbag. Mailbag. Seemed a little higher pitched than normal, Mike. Just a little bit Look, higher. The 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 pipes, the pipes have been a little destroyed oh, okay. over the week. All right, we're for, getting better. Well, every time you score on Jason, you scream really loud, and it's happened a lot. All right. If you have a question for the fantasy footballers, you can send it on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button. You can also dial the voicemail hotline three zero two four six four T F F. B, we got another voicemail question in there. Let's go to that. Hey, Ballers. This is David in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Great show. Um, had a quick question for you about waivers. Do you prefer to let waivers run you know, after the first set of the game? It runs on a, uh, a Tuesday at midnight into Wednesday. Then after that, do you prefer to let it be every day there's another waiver run? Or is it a wide open ad drop after that until the next set of games? 
Yeah, great question. And we have we have long since moved on from the wide open waiver world. Yes. We respect the fact that uh, other human beings have different jobs with different hours and different thoughts and different uh you know, time that they can put into it. And it's a much more even playing field to have the waivers run each and every day at the same time. Expectations are set. We use a fab system, but even, even still having them run at one time is probably the best way to go. Yeah. I mean, uh, even if I didn't respect your jobs and yeah. I, and who knows, maybe I do, maybe I don't, but, and I love being able to dominate on people. Oh, open waivers. We're professional, you know, fantasy analysts. So we can make the move. The second news breaks. That being said, continuous waivers, that's the that's usually what it's referred to in the settings and having it run every day is so much more fun. Every single day you have a, a bidding war. Every single day you have something to look at and everybody had time to get in. It's a blast. The only complaint that I ever hear is, what about Sunday? What about last minute waiver moves? You just got to prepare. In yeah. the years we've been playing with the system, I can't think of one moment where it would really ruin anything. Yeah, I think the only way that you can get into trouble is if you run it too early in the day. Sure. You need to find that balance. If you run it at 6 in the morning, things happen for fantasy before the game start. Let's say you know we're West Coast, so the game started at like 10 in the morning. There's a big window there. But we, we run them at like an hour or two before game time. It works out fine. Um, I mean, to me, optimal would be the way we do it, which is continuous every single day except for Tuesday. Correct. But if there was, if if we could take Sunday once they run, and then have it be open until kickoff, and then everyone is is locked again, I think that would be optimal. All right, Chris in Miami, would you guys agree taking Juju at the 104 in a dynasty startup? Age, potential, position, durability. Thank you. Are you cool with Juju at 104? Yes. Heck yes. Why All not? right. Joel in San Diego, how do you regulate draft pick trading in a keeper league? Well, we really don't regulate it a whole lot. We let it happen. We have a, a strict trade deadline that we tr we brought up. Ours in our main keeper league is a couple weeks before the normal deadline because yeah. we want people to make decisions on – the trajectory of their team earlier so that you don't get as much tanking or selling out when you don't get that last second sell out or the last second buy all the super players like right going into the playoffs but we don't let you trade more than a year in advance that's one thing we it's don't true. let yep. you do so and we uh, also there is a penalty so we don't regulate you you don't have to have your full allotment of picks heading into next year's draft you're our, it, you put yourself at the disadvantage that you don't have those picks, but you also then pay credit. You lose $10 of fab at the end of the draft for every pick that you did not have accounted for. So it, it cuts both ways for those players. Very interesting breaking news that I just received via email. Um, I don't know how this happens, but there is another Andrew Holloway out mm. there who seems to be from Georgia who just ordered a couple of things from Taco Bell. Oh, fans. Oh, oh man. A, be a beefy Fritos burrito and a quesarita combo. That sounds good. But he must have I mean, put in my email address somehow. So I he know put that yours in? Yeah, I think he mistyped it. And so now I know that there's another Andrew Holloway out there that is That has a very close email to yours as well. But a dun, 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 dun. You should email him. Yeah. And say so thanks for the Taco Bell. Because the, I, I, when I got the email, I thought maybe I was getting food, which, by the way, hashtag... Not a sponsor. <laughs> but I thought I was receiving food. Someone ordered it for me. Maybe Brooks was making it up to me after the Golden Tate situation. But no, it's just another Andrew. All right, time for a couple more questions. Kyle in Chicago, how much does having two players on the same team limit your upside? So on the same bad team. Carry on and Kenny G, for example, may need to trade one or both for higher ceiling players, is his thought. Thank you for salvaging my fantasy career. Love you guys. Kyle in Chicago. It can work out if they are elite players. For example, last year, Odell Beckham and Saquon Barkley, players that had both those teams, they were perfectly fine until Beckham was hurt and then you couldn't play him. But in this particular instance, I would not consider Carrion or Kenny G to be elite fantasy options. And they're on the same team, meaning they only one of them can score per drive, which definitely limits your upside on a week-to-week -week basis. I would not love to have both of those guys on my team, especially considering they're both early picks. 
I like if I end up with carry on and Marvin Jones as a value pick later on, I don't love it. I'm okay with it, but I certainly would not be spending a three and a four or a three and a five on these two players. Yeah, I mean, Saquon and Odell might legitimately be the number one running back talent, number one wide receiver talent in all of football. You did have teams like Cincinnati, you know, A.J. Green when he was healthy, Joe Mixon, you could have gotten away with it, but your ceiling was capped. Yeah. Well, the ceiling's capped, but the consistency is usually up. So it's just a matter of, I mean, you can't score a touchdown if you've got a running back and a wide receiver uh, on the same play, but if both of those players at the end of the season are going to finish well, they're probably going to be taking turns on who has the massive game, kind of level your baseline out. So if you've got superstars at other positions, I actually think it can be advantageous sometimes to have that stack. We also know that on losing teams, if you're a pass-catching running back, that does not reduce your output for fantasy football. All right, that is it for today's show. We want to thank Pristine Auction. Yesterday, a Josh Jacobs signed jersey. Raiders jersey, $79.85. I'm sure if you want to find a Golden Tate Lions jersey, you could probably do it at pristineauction.com. I'm looking for that high school jersey. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. Use the registration code BALLERS. BALLERS. Use the registration code BALLERS when you sign up at pristineauction.com. It'll give you $5 towards a future sports memorabilia purchase or anything that they have on their daily auctions. Our next show will be Tuesday. We'll be talking week one. Get those drafts. Enjoy your long weekend. Yeah, get those drafts done. We know you're still doing some of them this weekend. And we will see you Tuesday, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. This episode was brought to you by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. No matter where you fall on the offense versus defense debate, Head & Shoulders will give you a 100% flake-free scalp. It's offense. It's defense, Mike. Thank you, Jason. Did you know that Troy Palomalo's hair was insured for a million buckaroonies by Head & Shoulders in 2010? Check out Head & Shoulders at walmart.com or look and find it at your local Walmart store.